Welcome back. You know, if you wanted to start a good argument back in the 60s and 70s, all you had to do was mention that your 308 would uh, perform like a 306. The 308 has got a uh, significantly different uh, history than uh, many military cartridges turned civilian. Matter of fact, it worked the other way around. The 308 Winchester was introduced commercially in 1952 to the public, uh, two years before the military began to adopt it uh, for the uh, M14, which replaced the 306 Garand. And public acceptance of it uh, was sketchy at the time. Um, perhaps the, those who uh, immediately uh, took to it were those who uh, understood uh, how good the 300 Savage was on deer and uh, other game, and uh, they were they were probably among the first to uh, accept it. However, you know even then there was a little bit of there was a little bit of um, animosity towards it because the 300 Savage was a very much beloved uh, gun for deer hunting, and um, there were a lot of people, especially in the Northeast and uh, in the Northern states, uh, even even the Midwest that. Uh, favored the 300 Savage because it was just about the perfect uh, ballistics for uh, deer for a 30 caliber gun. It wasn't overly destructive. It was very, very authoritative. It, it uh, had a muzzle velocity with a 150 grain bullet of uh, 2,660 feet per second. But um, the 308, when it when it came along, uh, it it basically sought to displace uh, a very. They were very much. Um, satisfied customers with the 300 Savage and they didn't feel that they need any, needed anything else. Obviously those who already owned 300 Savages didn't, didn't see much need to uh, replace their rifles with uh, one that simply uh, shot another 150 feet per second or so faster and um, there were, there were uh, it, certainly when it didn't need it. Um, and those who were 306 aficionados uh, they really, they really derided it. Uh, they saw absolutely no need for a uh, gun to come along, another 30 caliber gun that was simply going to uh, claim to do what the 306 did, but they, they very much doubted it. And that was the boast of the day: was that the um, 308 was equivalent to the 306. Um, there is a, there is a difference of approximately 150 feet per second uh, between the 306 and the 308 across the board. Um, the, uh, the thir the, those who favored the 306 would cite that the uh, 308 simply wouldn't handle anything over 180 grain bullets, whereas the 306 would, so therefore it was a better uh, deep woods cartridge on heavy game such as moose and uh, elk out in the, out in, uh, you know, in the, in the timbers, the higher timbers, it was a, it was a fer very favored uh, elk cartridge. And uh, at that time, uh, the, the Magnum cartridges hadn't really uh, taken a strong foothold yet. Some of them hadn't even been released until the mid-50s or early 60s. But um, so when the, the, three, the 308 uh, came along, it really had a, it really had a, a very uh, difficult start. Even until, uh, even in, well into the uh, 70s, uh, it, it still was not widely accepted. The um, it, its greatest its greatest boast was that it could handle uh, short action rifles and therefore was a little bit handier and shorter. There were some rifles that were only made in short actions, especially some of the ones that Winchester released their their lever action, their auto, um, and uh, in in those rifles it, it served quite well. But for those who uh, favored uh, pumps, for instance, Remington still continued to make their uh, 760 pump in the uh, 306 and to shorten it by a uh, half inch was no big deal to most people. And it was certainly no big deal when they figured that they were losing out on some uh, velocity that they could use uh, and some bullet weight. And the 306, you know, uh, even though it had a 110 grain, uh, even though it was loaded with 110 grain bullets, where uh, 
which are not as efficiently stabilized with a one in ten twist, uh, they did quite well. Most uh, most thir most thirty oh sixes did very handily with um, with one hundred ten grain and one hundred twenty five grain uh, bullets that were commercially loaded at the time. So. Um, the, you know, the, th the 308 really was uh, against a backdrop of uh, just, it was not very, it was not very exciting. Uh, it was just another, it was just another 30. Um, if for the most part, uh, the manufacturers were the ones that uh, changed the scene. Um, the manufacturers simply forced it upon uh, the public by discontinuing chamberings in the 300 Savage uh, and then going over to the 308. And of course, uh, for those who hand loaded, uh, it, it was the 308 made more sense. It was easier to hand load. Um, the 300 Savage had a tendency to uh, be too difficult to, to get it up to full uh, velocity. Um, even if you look at, even if you look at the loading manuals today, you'll see that the, third, the uh, 300 Savage really tops out at 40 grains, 41 grains or so of uh, IMR 4064 powder. And it tops out not because it's reached its velocity and pressure maximum, but because the, um, the, the case simply won't hold anymore. It's got a very, very short neck, which is uh, low, it's, it's a smaller neck lengthwise than its diameter, which is uh, contrary to standard loading practice. Um, standard loading practice is to have a uh, cartridge case neck, which is at least uh, the, the length of its diameter. So, and because it had such a, uh, a, a sharp uh, shoulder, the 300 Savage simply could not be loaded up to capacity with um, most of the bulky powders that existed at the time, and that's why it topped out at about less than 2,700 feet per second. There were, there were powders that have, and there have been powders that have since been introduced that are less bulky and uh, can, can raise, significantly raise the um, loading density and, and get, the, get the velocities up a little bit. Uh, there, are some, there are some powders that the 300 Savage now can uh, shoot well up to 2,800 feet per second plus. Um, but you know that its day has come and gone. It's uh, nobody's going to be going back to the 300 Savage. No manufacturer is going to go back to it. The 308 is here to stay now, um, and certainly nobody will argue these days uh, about the 308's uh, effectiveness. But it's very curious that the 308 um, was introduced to the American public before it became a uh, military um, before it became a military round by a solid two years. So uh, in, in that regard, it was uh, significantly different than uh, other military cartridges that were adopted by the public, such as obviously the 223 um, was, was something that um, was largely a military uh, standard before uh, the public was given uh, the cartridge. And even then, it wasn't the same cartridge. Um, the, uh, and, and you know, and eventually that that certainly that certainly took hold. The um, 3006 was uh, certainly a, a military cartridge uh, in use before it became a standardized commercial cartridge. And as a as a commercial cartridge, it ran uh, a good 200 feet per second greater uh, with a 150 grain bullet than its military lo military loading. Military loading runs around 27 and a half. Uh, 100 feet per second, and um, it's, it's factory loading even back in the late 30s and early 40s was running uh, about 2960. So it was still, it was already way back, it was already running uh, close to 3,000 feet per second with a 150 grain bullet. And so with the 308 coming along at uh, an advertised velocity of around 2,800 feet per second, uh, which was uh, 100, about 150, 160 feet per second less than uh, the 3006. It really, it really didn't uh, bring up too much of a. Uh, it, it was not a very interesting cartridge to most people, and it, it basically got a lot of yawns. But certainly, uh, you know, the, a newer generation came along. Um, you know, the the um, 
the fifties generation, uh, they didn't they didn't have that they didn't have that attachment to um, the thirty oh six that their fathers and grandfathers did, and uh, they didn't have they didn't have the emotional and sentimental attachment to the the three hundred savages that their that their fathers and grandfathers had. So it was a new it was a new customer audience, and um, the uh, the it, as time went on uh, into the 70s and into the 80s, uh, this, you know, our gen my generation was the one that uh, finally realized that it had it had a good place, and it was it made the same it made the same same common sense um, in terms of a 30 caliber cartridge that the 300 Savage made. It, it was not overly destructive. Um, it had a it had a fairly tolerable uh, recoil in a lightweight rifle. And uh, it was, even though it was just a, even though it was just a three quarters of an inch shorter or so in some actions, uh, that was enough to make the rifle a little bit lighter and a little bit more handy and compact. So, but how does how does the 308 stack up ballistically? I'm asked that question sometimes. Well, it's not a long range cartridge. The um, The person who buys a 308 um, certainly should not be buying it if he's interested in, in uh, long range. That's not that's not his forte. Um, despite the fact that the military uh, the military has used it for uh, for years as a as a battle uh, cartridge that can go at extended ranges and you know with with a properly sighted rifle, um, you know as a as a hunting rifle, uh, it, you know it it has it has a a weight to length ratio with a 150 grain bullet. Uh, that's the one that gets to you know 2,800 feet per second or so. And there are the super performance uh, you know loadings now that that up the ante a little bit and get it more into the uh, the, the, the standard 300. Uh, I mean the uh, uh, 306 category. But having said that, you know not all guns. Some do, some some favor them, and some simply don't. Uh, you know, some some cartridges just uh, won't. Some of those cartridges just won't uh, shoot accurately in some rifles. But nobody needs, basically, nobody needs to have uh, extremely high velocity uh, for the ranges that most people hunt. Uh, what is the typical uh, game? For the 308, the uh, the white-tailed deer. The white-tailed deer is generally not a long-range uh, animal. It's uh, it's generally found in in more wooded uh, countryside, um, you know, smaller smaller farmland areas, broken broken meadows with woods and pastures, um, and so shots are generally under 250 yards uh, in most cases, anyways. And that's exactly where the 308. Uh, Rains. It's it's a very very good and effective cartridge on white-tailed deer with a 150 grain bullet out to out to 250 to 275 yards, and that's when I'm <clears throat> I'm talking about a point blank point blank trajectory without having to um, mess around with you know with uh, range finding devices and things like that because white-tailed deer just don't correspond to that baloney. Uh, they 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 appear. And you, you got to get your shot off right now. Uh, there's no, there's no city. It's not like it's not like out in the open plains where you uh, can stalk a, an antelope or a, a mule deer at some distance or an elk. Uh, White-tailed deer are not that sort of animal. They they are they are fleeting. Uh, they're they're here one second and gone the next. Uh, the person who gets his white-tailed deer has to do it right now. And point blank trajectory is what it's all about with a. Uh, with a deer rifle. As I've described in other videos, point blank trajectory is a trajectory such that with the crosshair uh, or the sights, uh, open sights or peep sight or whatever it is, uh, or, or even, a, uh, even a red dot, whatever it is, with that, with that sight placed directly on the target, the middle of the target, the bullet will never be above nor below. Uh, a point greater than six inches from that point of, uh, from that line of sight, the yellow S. And point blank is uh, point blank range for the 308 with a 150 grain bullet. Uh, 
is roughly about uh, 265 to 270 yards, depending on uh, the circumstance, depending on the load, the length of the barrel, and things like that. Now, barrel length uh, can make uh, a significant difference with 308s, as it does with with other uh, cartridges. Uh, you know, if you clip a if you clip the barrel of a uh, 308 down from its its advertised factory length is oftentimes 24 inches. Very few 308s come market it come to the market with 24 inch barrels most have 22 inch barrels some have even 20 inch barrels and uh, every inch of barrel will, will generally uh, mean a, a loss of 30 feet per second so a two inch barrel loss is a loss of 60 feet per second so you start getting down uh, you start getting down from that 2800 foot per second level uh, closer to 2700 feet per second which is a good that's a very good velocity for uh, deer, uh, 2,700 feet per second, 26 to 20, 2,700 feet per second is what uh, the 300 Savage was all about, and that's what made it so very, very uh, popular uh, for so many shooters for, for a long time. Um, Benny, here. The boy. Um, but the, uh, the the 300, if, if you want to have a long range rifle, you have to get a long range cartridge. You really don't want to uh, take, you know, it's it's um, it seems to be a it's always a popular thing to do for people to uh, try to stretch a cartridge beyond its uh, reasonable ballistics. Um, you know, people have people have they buy they buy a, uh, th a 357 Magnum revolver and then they stack it full of more powder than it can hold simply so that they can get a little bit more velocity. Well, if they want that, then they should buy a 3 357 maximum. Uh, but then they'll do the same thing with the 357 maximum. Um, you know, cartridges should never be loaded beyond what their uh, stated reasonable uh, velocity level is. Matter of fact, most, most cartridges, uh, especially those that operate in the so-called efficiency uh, range, which is typical of the 308, the 308 is an exceedingly efficient cartridge. Um, it's the basis upon which, just as the 300 Savage was, the 300 Savage was a very efficient and accurate cartridge. It just had a short neck and a and a squat shoulder, uh, and that's that was the basis for the 308's original design. But you know, efficiency um, has a lot to do with um, has a lot to do with a, a cartridge's diet for powder, different different loads, and. When you have a when you have a, a cartridge that's very efficient, it will handle a great number of combinations of, of powders and loads, and the the disparity, the difference between uh, an accurate load and an inaccurate load in that rifle is generally much smaller than it would be in a less efficient cartridge. Um, you know, if you it's it's quite it's quite typical for a uh, a bad load in a 308 to run about uh, two inches and a, and a good load will run around a uh, half to five eighths of an inch uh, and in some rifles you know a bad load will run five or six inches and a good load will run uh, perhaps uh, three quarters of an inch to an inch. Um, I think there sometimes is some you know confusion about um, efficiency versus accuracy. I've often times stated that a cartridge is uh, inefficient or it is efficient or whatever. Uh, efficiency really has nothing to do with potential accuracy. It just has to do with uh, the, its, its broad diet for different types of loads and powders. Uh, some cartridges such as the, the 270 Winchester simply will not perform at, its, at their level of uh, velocity, they're, which is what they're for. The two, a person who buys a 270 buys it because he wants to stretch out. He needs to have, he needs to have a 350 to 400 yard rifle. And, uh, but the powders, the powders that will give it that velocity uh, are, are, very, are very sparse. There aren't very many powders out there that will uh, get it to that velocity. So the, the powder selection is limited. And when you have a limited powder selection, uh, you know, you might only have one powder out of four or five that will actually uh, perform accurately. So that's what I mean by that. But uh, you you can certainly have 
an inefficient cartridge that has uh, superlative accuracy. I've seen that many times. I've seen uh, exceedingly fussy guns that, that will shoot, uh, that, that basically shoot ex with extreme accuracy, uh, but only with a couple of loads. Uh, if you get if you get outside that if you get outside that window, uh, with with different powders and, and different perhaps even different bullets, they just don't perform that well. But going back to the 308, the 308 is one of those uh, one of those cartridges that uh, just simply does does very very well with a very broad uh, selection of powders. Um, and you know the the greatest selection of powders is within the it is in the the medium burning range. There are many there are many powders to choose from for the 308, and um, you know you can see so much online about uh, you know the the most accurate powders for a 308 and everything. I really don't pay too much attention to it because although uh, Varget might be the most accurate powder for a particular um, well, there's a bird. Yeah. Uh, even though Varget or IMR 4064 might be the most accurate powder. Uh, in the uh, 308 and perhaps even 748, you know the 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 way other powders can perform in that cartridge is so uh, are so close to it that it really doesn't make that much difference. The person who owns a 308 uh, is pretty well equipped uh, with almost any powder that's available you know, in a medium burning range. It's a it's a um, it's a cartridge that does very well. Uh, with bullet weights ranging from 110 grain. It, I, I don't really recommend a, a 308 as a varmint cartridge. Just simply, it's a little bit too much, it's a little bit too much bore diameter to be using, too much recoil and everything else to be using on, on varmints. And it doesn't really have the trajectory. Um, the, the shorter, lighter bullets have got actually lousy uh, ballistic coefficient compared to uh, other, other cartridges that have um, lightweight bullets. Uh, just to give you an example, it's its offspring, the 243 uh, Winchester, which is the basically it's the 308 case that's been necked down to six millimeters, 243 diameter. Um, that that the largest bullet in uh, that uh, cartridge is a hundred grain bullet, whereas the 308, uh, if you if you put a 110 grain bullet in it, uh, it's very very short. Uh, and it doesn't have very uh, good ballistic coefficient. It, it speeds out of the barrel at good uh, initial velocity, uh, but because it has uh, no great ballistic shape, it immediately starts slowing down. It's like basically it's it's like a drag shoot. It just it just uh, uh, it just uh, immediately starts slowing down. But in its uh, in in the range of bullets that it operates best at, uh, 125 to 165, and even 180 grain bullets. Uh, it's, a, it's a really super cartridge. Um, it's a cartridge that, well, I'll give you an example. My, um, my wife years ago had a uh, 760 Remington pump. It was a beautiful uh, gun that, um, that shot routinely uh, half-inch and five-eighths inch groups with Sierra 125 grain bullets. It was a wonderful, uh, it was a wonderful uh, cartridge for, uh, for uh, lightweight bullets. And um, and with 150 and 165 grain bullets, it was a it was a it was a cartridge. Uh, it was a rifle that would uh, consistently shoot uh, one inch to one and a quarter inches, and that's out of a pump. And that's not surprising, you know, because a pump, uh, a Remington pump, is a free flow to barrel all the way, and uh, there's nothing touching the barrel. So uh, it's really it's got a good solid platform to be accurate. So anybody who's interested in a good, accurate, uh, fast Fast running repeater. Uh, I could always recommend a, a, a 760 Remington pump, which now the 7600. Um, but that's how accurate that cartridge is. And in a uh, in a target grade rifle, uh, it's certainly capable of, of shooting way less than half inch groups all the time. But uh, just a standard off the off the shelf uh, bolt action rifle can easily be expected uh, to shoot an, uh, into an inch. Uh, or inch and a half with, with factory ammo. Uh, and it's been able to do that for a long time. It was doing that even with wood stocked uh, rifles, which I, I just happen to like anyway because they're just classy looking. Uh, 
you have any, uh, you know, if anybody has any uh, question about whether a 3006 or a 308 uh, is is best suited for them, uh, the big question is whether or not uh, you desire to use bullets from 180 grains on up. Up to 180 grains, both perform uh, similarly. The the 3006 is always going to be reaching out just a little bit farther when, you know, the super performance. 308s don't bring it up to the super performance 3006s. It's just the way it goes. It's always going to be ahead of it that much more. You know, you can't. There's nothing you can do about the fact that the three the, the 308 is a half inch shorter and has less powder capacity. It um, the the uh, the 3006 has a 20 percent greater powder powder capacity in its in its case. So there's nothing there's nothing you can do about that. If if big game, heavy game, is uh, what you're after, uh, the 3006 is still the better bet because it can it can take uh, 220 grain, 200 grain, 190 grain bullets uh, very very nicely and it propels them at uh, extremely good velocity. The 3006, as I mentioned in in that particular video, the 3006 will uh, handle uh, 200 uh, 220 grain bullets. Uh, with the same velocity that a, a 308 handles 180 grain bullets, that's a that's a huge that's a huge benefit. But for anybody who's interested in, in a standard white tail cartridge, especially for this type of woodlands and stuff, it's a it's a tremendous uh, it's a tremendous cartridge and uh, it has more than adequate penetration. It has ample penetration. I shouldn't even use the word adequate. Its, its greatest threat these days, its, its, its greatest threat these days is an, another one of its um, offspring is the seven millimeter weight that was brought out in the uh, in the late 70s. The um, seven millimeter weight uh, is, is the 308 neck down to seven millimeter to uh, approximates the uh, seven by 57 Mauser in ballistics, factory ballistics. Uh, actually, it probably does a little bit better in terms of factory ballistics. And that's probably its greatest market threat. Uh, the seven millimeter 08 has uh, been a very, very uh, important cartridge on the American scene. And uh, I'll talk about the seven millimeter 08 sometime later. But um, the, the seven millimeter 08 really uh, got a strong foothold. It started out initially as the uh, darling of the, the silhouette uh, competition uh, scene. Uh, it, it could get another it could get another 25 or 30 yards uh, of flat trajectory over the 308 it, it stretches the trajectory out to 300 yards uh, so it gives it another 25 or 30 yards of, of flatness um, for a lighter weight bullet too for 140 grain bullet versus 100 150 grain or 165 grain bullet in the 308 um, and it's just uh, it so it doesn't have it doesn't have the the frontal area, but it does have it does have great sectional uh, density, which is very much in its favor. And uh, so uh, the 308 probably has diminished a little bit in popularity since the 7 millimeter 08 has come on the scene. Uh, and it gradually, the, the 7 millimeter 08 has gradually become, I think, a little bit more popular in some circles than the 308. But because the 308 still is uh, the military uh, standard throughout the world, along with the uh, 5.56, the, the 223, uh, the 308's always going to be around and it's not going anywhere soon. And it's a very good selection for a person who uh, just needs to have one rifle. Uh, you know, the, it, it might be a little bit of a, you might have to do a little bit of head scratching to figure out whether you want to have a 7 millimeter, 7 millimeter 08 versus a 308 or a 3006, but they're all in that same the peas and a pod when it comes to the performance on uh, deer, for the most part, uh, it's only when it's only when you get to extended ranges uh, beyond 275 yards that the 306 gives it a little bit uh, greater range, and it's only when you get into bullet weights and game size that uh, you know that require heavier bullet, heavier and longer bullets that the 306 really makes makes that much of a difference. Um, but in the uh, in woodlands, 
uh, you know, any one of them will perform the same. The, the deer isn't going to know the difference. Um, so uh, the, the final question is whether there's a difference between uh, NATO uh, 762 ammo and um, Winchester 308. Uh, unlike, unlike the uh, NATO uh, 5.56 and uh, 223 Remington, uh, there, isn't, there isn't a difference in uh, internal pressure. Um, the um, the 308 is uh, fully up to fully up to uh, pressure that the military uses. Uh, in fact, the the, uh, the the difference the difference is more uh, probably on the side of the commercial cartridge when it comes to having a velocity uh, gain. The, the uh, military uses a thicker brass case, especially the cases that come from uh, Lake City Arsenal. Uh, the brass is thicker. They use they use standard boxer primers like uh, all like all commercial primers. Uh, much of the much of the military primers that exist around the world are uh, Burdan primers, which cannot be reloaded. Uh, they they're a, a different priming system altogether. With the the case itself is part of the primer. Uh, it has it contains the uh, anvil. The um, but curiously, the 308. Uh, the, the 308 owner over the years um, never really sought uh, military ammo out. Uh, it, for some reason, although uh, military cartridges were available, uh, most 308 owners was simply bought commercial uh, packaged ammunition by Winchester, Remington, Federal, and, and all the Norma, all the other companies, uh, and they were satisfied with it. And they never had any. They never had any great desire to shoot. Uh, military uh, fodder out of it. Uh, and as I say, in most cases, the military stuff doesn't have quite the velocity that the commercial stuff does, and certainly the, the military stuff is not suitable for hunting in virtually any state that uh, requires soft point or hollow point uh, expanding, expanding tip bullets. So uh, it, it never really had that sort of popularity. Um, the only, the only uh, Big exception to that are the people who you know have uh, military-style rifles, such as the uh, uh, M1A uh, and and some of the Fabrique National uh, rifles and things uh, that are on military uh, platforms. But um, for the most part, the 308 has always been a very good commercial success, uh, although it got a slow and bumpy start. Um, and as I say, it was a you know it was around for it was around for the better part of 25 years before uh, it really took a hold. Uh, well into the well into the 70s, it was just uh, it, it really there were just a lot of people who didn't uh, see much need for it. And it wasn't until it wasn't until the 50s generation uh, started buying their own rifles that uh, it, it caught on. So that's all I have to say about the um, the 308. It's a beautiful day. It's uh, still not quite. It's certainly not um, warm out. It's, it's in the uh, 40s today, and uh, I guess I'll be yanking my snowblower off the tractor. Uh, we did get some snow the other day, but it didn't amount to anything, and the, and the sun took it away before it, uh, before it stayed long. So uh, that's it for now. Take care, and God bless.